Well, hello again, and welcome to Topics of Light. We're so glad you joined us. We are Gloria, Amber, and Denise, coming from Family Worship Christian Church here in Las Vegas. In Vegas. You know, it's hot here in Las Ooh, Vegas, isn't it? 125 yeah. in my backyard two days ago. 125? 125. 125. And the car, it was like 114 or something. Oh, yeah. my goodness. Yeah. Thank it, God for AC. <laughs> yeah. Amen. We are grateful. We are Amen. grateful. So here we are from Las Vegas saying welcome to our session today. Today, we get the opportunity Amen. to discuss prophecy. And if there would ever be a time for us to talk a little bit about prophecy and talk a little bit about what it is and what to watch for and so forth, I think that I think it would be today. Yes. It would be today. There's so many things you can turn on any television program and you can hear somebody forecast the future, mm -hmm. just like they're forecasting the weather, right? Yep. They would say, how hot is it gonna be today? It's 104, well, 14, yeah. 20, whatever it's gonna be today. But oftentimes people will be forecasting things and they might call that prophecy, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Of what the mm -hmm. spiritual temperature might be. <clears throat> but there's a whole lot different uh, than that. and. So today, 1 Corinthians 14, 1, we want to start with that scripture because it Paul, Apostle Paul encourages each and every one of us to desire spiritual gifts, but especially that we may prophesy. So in the, in a, in the, reason, in the strongest terms here, wherefore, brethren, covet to prophesy. It means seek that gift, want that gift. So we should not be confused though because there's difference between prophecy, mm -hmm. or prophesying, and a prophetic's office, mm -hmm. who's a prophet, yeah. right? Yeah. There's two different things. The simple gift of prophecy might have not have a revelation in it. You know what I'm saying? That, that a revelation in it. Rather, it speaks unto men and women for their edification, exhortation, and comfort. Mm -hmm. Edification exhortation and comfort and you find that in first corinthians 14 3. so i had a couple questions and we have some examples ready to go but i was thinking if you think about comfort edification and exhortation what what is an example for you that you may have on the simple prophecy that all men and women should be doing well, it's to build up one another or to build up the church. Um, when you're edifying, you're encouraging somebody, you're, um, you know, bringing them closer to God. Also, comfort could be, you know, someone could be going through a situation that the Holy Spirit knows about. So um, he could be ministering to them. He could be trying to bring the church up to a higher level with mm -hmm. him of right. building each other up in the Lord. So that's what um, the is for in the in the church. Mm -hmm. It's not a prophetic office, it's prophecy. Mm -hmm. So and and you're prompted, like you were talking about, you're prompted uh, to to comfort somebody. <clears throat> Have you ever been somewhere and you've seen somebody and you just sense in your heart that you're to go comfort them? maybe give them a word of encouragement, maybe ask them how you could help. That's in sense, isn't it? Like a sense of comforting someone, you know, that you could use, yeah. right? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. <clears throat> I had an experience just not long ago, flying back home, uh, from home, uh, uh, there was a girl, no, actually I was leaving here and going to home, and there was a girl that got on the plane and she had walked by me and I looked at her, she was young, she was in her 20s and she walked by me and I could tell she'd really been crying mm -hmm. and she was still crying. And so I, I just said, oh, Father, bless her. Bless her heart. She just such a sweetie, you know, and uh, she went back. She came back and asked me if she could sit down on the in the rows. And I said, sure. So I was sitting on the aisle seat. And so she she wanted to sit by the window. So she took the window seat. And I, you know, sometimes you don't know. I mean, I've, I have like when my mother uh, went home to be with the Lord and I was getting on the plane, I was also crying. I didn't really want to talk to anybody about it. I mean, I was in mourning, so you, you kind of have to be careful there. But I said, you know, are you okay? Is there anything that we could talk about? And her basic thing was she was afraid of flying. Mm -hmm. She she had never flown by herself. This was her first time ever to fly by herself, and she was terrified of flying. And I said, well, sweetheart, I'm going to tell you now, 
you're blessed on departure, blessed on arrival, and you start telling her the word of God. This is what's going to happen, right? Because this is what the Lord has already said. And so <clears throat> she said, well, and so then there was a gentleman who came and sat down at the aisle with us, and we began to talk to her and uh, to give her comfort, to edify her, to build her up, encourage her, tell her it's all going to be fine. And uh, by the time we got through the flight, she was absolutely, there were no more tears. We were all sitting there talking and laughing. She got off the plane and she said, by the way, guys, I have another flight that I'm going to have to fly in about two months. Can we meet up? Uh -huh. <laughs> I'll pay for your ticket. <laughs> you guys have helped me so much. And I thought, see, that's the Lord. Yes. That's the Lord. That's because it. fear dissipated and comfort and peace stepped in. And I thought, wow. I mean, and it's not like I've. I am not a prophet. I've not been called into that particular position in the body of Christ. But everybody has the spirit of prophecy if you have Jesus. And mm -hmm. so you can comfort, edify, and encourage if you will. Yeah. Oh, if and you that's will. Good. If you will. <laughs> yeah. That is so good. That Hebrew word for prophecy mm -hmm. is called like what you did, flow forth. To flow mm -hmm. forth. You saw the need. And you flowed forth. And I thought, oh, I bet she was so glad to be sitting next to you. What a blessing. Because when you've got fear knocking on your door oh, and somebody brings the promise of God to you, mm -hmm. it's like, thank you, Lord. But that flow forth carries that connotation of bubbling forth like a fountain. You just kind of bubble forth. And that mm -hmm. Greek word means to speak for another. And you know, God wants us to be a blessing to Amen. other people Amen. to yeah. bless them and comfort them and edify them mm -hmm. doesn't he yeah, yeah. well we ha i had this one situation well it's a group of us we all went out you know the parking lot and we didn't know that anything was going on with this woman you know she's with a couple of her children and um we just came up we were just sharing jesus with her and then before we left the holy spirit prompted you know ask her if she wants prayer so we asked her and then she just started crying and she was telling us her situation and you know things that were going on and so i was just so thankful that god connected us at the time I and mean, we we didn't know at all anything was wrong you know mm -hmm. and so she just started opening up and i said okay well we can pray with you you know and god can help you with this situation we'll believe for healing mm -hmm. for the person that she was talking about so then we we prayed with her and then she left she was like i am so glad that we met you today you know and i said mm -hmm. same with us we're so happy That's we met you right, you know? right. So she went there receptive. So you're like yes, yes. <laughs> thank you jesus you know well, well and it's, it's a relief occasionally to <laughs> say thank the lord well, yeah. i was where i was supposed to be yeah, so I you know. could use me at the right time I know. Yeah. that's exciting yeah <laughs> Yeah, because we wonder, are we going to be at the right place That's at the right, right. time? And yeah. then the blessing that we get to meet somebody else. That's right. And they want to they want to meet up with us again, or that's we'll right. see them again. And that's we have right. that opportunity. And I think that's why the Lord wants us so much to walk in that, in that prophecy. Because people are blessed. We get blessed. They get blessed. And so it's one of those nine gifts of the Spirit listed mm -hmm. in 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 11. By the way, it's 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 11. It's described there as one of the most valuable gifts. Mm -hmm. It's also presented as a gift that's available. And as we were saying, not for a selected few, but every believer, if you will, right? Amen. And sometimes people have to say, I'm willing to be willing. That's all you might have to do. Sometimes you might think, well, I don't quite understand all of that. That seems a little different to me, but you may be walking it in much more than you know. You're a believer. And you may be always walking. in love. It's always, never always in love. It's, yeah, it's never said any other yeah. way except for in love right. from the Lord, mm -hmm. from right. the Holy Spirit. You know, mm -hmm. the Lord talks about rivers, rivers. Mm -hmm. And yeah. when you talk about how it means to flow forth, <laughs> yes. flow out, yes. that's what it is. It's life in you flowing out and splashing into somebody else's life. That's good. Mm -hmm. And you are literally. Uh, it, it, what you read was so good, Pastor. It said to speak for God or be his spokesperson. Mm -hmm. In other words, I'm standing here and I am telling you what God would tell you if he were standing right here. And by the way, he is. Right. Because he's in us, right? Mm -hmm. And so he is testifying to them and mediating, having a meeting with them yes. as we get to be there, kind mm -hmm. of as a third party. I mean, yeah. isn't that awesome? I yeah. mean, what a plan. Right. This is amazing. Well, maybe he knows how to reach yes. them. Yes, right. It's as the Spirit wills. It yeah. can't be something that just happens. It's as the Spirit wills. Mm -hmm. Amen. 
right and as you as you grow and flow in that it'll just be oh you'll just you'll just be understanding that he's moving like that in your life and he is flowing and he's coming up and coming over and you know oftentimes again confusion can really set in when believers equate the simple gift of prophecy with the office of the prophet. Now there is office of the prophet and there are prophets today. Didn't do away, the, the prophet didn't do away back in the day, back in the time of Jesus's ministry. It, they, we have prophets today that are speaking and they're in an office that is uh, speaking about a variety of different things that we as Christians need to know. And um, for instance, sometimes you might hear a prophet give forth a revelation and think and about the future or something that might be happening and you think, I can do that too. But see, it's different, it's different. And then you try, you try it and you end up getting in trouble. And that's why we wanna be very, very careful about giving prophecy uh, like that, like these personal prophecies, like who you should marry or who's gonna win a ball game or, or something like that. You know, we should be very, very careful about those things because when such prophecies are given, they're usually, usually an error. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's usually an error like that. Lives are ruined and unfortunate things can happen to people. There are people today that married somebody they weren't to be married to because somebody gave them a prophetic word that they should get married. And I truly believe that in any time that a word is given, it will bear witness mm -hmm. with us. It'll yeah, bear peace. witness with us. Mm -hmm. We'll have peace with it. Mm -hmm. And I've heard from people, they say, well, I heard something, I just don't have peace with that. Set it on a shelf, just mm -hmm. set it on a shelf because we're to try wait. the word of God. We're to wait, we're to find it in the word. So we don't and wanna- Test every spirit. Right, That's right. That's right. Yes. Test every spirit. And we don't wanna turn off prophecy or just say, oh, that no. doesn't work. Just because somebody said something and it was wrong, that's not either because, right. you know, things happen. People can misunderstand, they might hear, hear wrong. But according to the new prophet, the New Testament, when we're looking at um, prophecy, according to the New Testament, he that prophesieth speaketh under men for edification, exhortation, and comfort. And you talked about that, it's always good, it's good. Right, mm -hmm. Amber? Yes. It's good. Always in line with the word. In line yeah. with the word. Always in line with the word. Line with yep. the word. Always yeah. lines Always. up with the word. So you hear something that's just right out there. That's why you really have to be in your Bible and really be reading the word of God and, and be attending a good Bible-based church where you can get mm -hmm. the word of God and have friends that will help you because there's a lot of things floating out there mm -hmm. that, aren't, that aren't godly, that can seem a little bit like it, but it isn't. And there are people then that'll capitalize on that. Like we've heard about cults and leaders that have done Absolutely. unscrupulous mm -hmm. things yeah. and they're following, they've got followers and people are hurt and so forth and so on. And they're always promising a peace, but that peace isn't in it. It's very turbulent. It's very It's turbulent. usually in them. Yes. They're promising yeah. peace. I will give you peace. No, no, no. Right, <laughs> right. It's well, not also, in another person, it's in Jesus. That's right. it. So you don't throw all the, all your life into this person. You throw your life into Jesus. He's the one. He's mm -hmm. the one. Good point. I'm sorry yeah. I interrupted yeah. you. No, I'm glad you did because okay. that was good. It was good to remind. Anything you'd like to share really quickly, Amber? Um, I just know that if it's not from God, it can be, um, like she's saying, dangerous. And if it's not in the Word, because there's some, they've used it to like twist it and manipulate um, to get their way in weird situations and things um it's just best to be in a holy spirit filled church that tells the truth one like this one um that you can come to because um it's just it's best to know you know what's god and what's not mm -hmm. and the truth of the word and there is true prophecy there is mm -hmm. prophets out there that are operating in the office but it will also you'll have peace about it you'll know that it's from god and the more you spend time with God in the word, you will know if it's a counterfeit. That's right. And that is so good. That's so good. 
we will hear his voice, but another will not follow. Well, thank you for joining us today. It was such a pleasure coming into your homes and seeing you, uh, so to speak. Well, we, I guess we know you're out there. We hear from you, but we're so grateful that you joined in with us today. And again, if you need prayer, please inbox us or call us 702-880-9673. But until next time, be blessed. And we are saying thank you for tuning in.